All right. Welcome to another episode of the Reiki Lifestyle Podcast with Colleen. Hello. And we're excited today to have longtime colleague and friend Shelly Kammermeyer. Hi. So Shelly is a senior licensed teacher and assistant director with the ICRT. She and her husband, Mike, have owned Inner Compass Reiki since 2004. They teach Reiki and sound healing in Oregon. They're very close to us. They're mm-hmm. over on the Oregon coast, um, the San Francisco Bay Area and Seattle, as well as online. They use Reiki in all aspects of their life, including manifesting abundance. Shelly works with her students to release blockages and create the life they desire. She's also a co-creator for Kid Reiki, um, which is a new course and manual and energy. I'm very excited for that coming up. Um, and classes for Reiki master teachers, or their classes for Reiki master teachers to learn how to teach confidently to children and heal their own inner child. So that's wonderful. You can keep more uh, or you can find more inner information about everything for Shelly, everything she's doing um, at innercompassreiki.com. And I want to spell inner because it's not intercompass, it's inner, I-N-N-E-R, compassreiki.com. And you can find um, her and Mike on social media at intercompassreiki on Facebook and Instagram. I also just want to say that you can find more information about Kid Reiki at kidreiki.love, correct? Correct. Yes. All right. Just for anybody that's interested in that, you can find more information about that. Um, Classes are coming up in December and then more classes will be coming up again. Just go go to the, the, the website to find more information. But what I'm really excited today to have Shelly on about is a really important topic for Um, Reiki practitioners, Reiki businesses, and anybody that is wanting to manifest more financial abundance in their life. Um, So it's a a really important topic, I think, for Reiki practitioners, Reiki businesses, but it also extrapolates out to just your life in general, whether that's in a job or career or a different business that you might have, you can apply these principles to your life in general. But I do think Shelly, I love that we're going to be talking about this today because I do think that in Reiki, there's some misunderstandings about this. There's a lot of work to be done. So many of us are just called to be healers and to help people. And how do those intertwine and work and flow? And I know you are are here to talk a lot about that today, too. So really glad to be talking about the subject. And yeah, thank you. And welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Well, so why don't we start a little bit about, you know, your Reiki story, but also um, how and why you live and teach this subject today um, and kind of how you came to your own truth around this and how you teach others around it as well. Thank you. Sure. Um, So I guess the first thing is um, I when I first learned Reiki, I learned from a lovely woman down in um, San Jose. I lived in the Bay Area then, but I had a very busy full-time job um, and I was very successful at it. And and, um, to transition out of, and, and living in the Bay Area, it's one of the most expensive parts of the country, to be able to to transition out of doing what I was doing, which was, you know, sucking the life out of me, I, um, and to do something that was so fulfilling, I needed to be able to, it needed to be able to be profitable. It, it you know, and, and there were things that we did that we changed to um, change our budget, but to still be able to live in the Bay Area, we needed, you know, it needed to produce a certain amount of income. And um, so what I did was, I was uh, part, I was doing Reiki part time, and I was still working where I used to work before. And, um, and for years, 
it, it took several years. And, and that's one of the things that I think that a lot of people need to understand is that it's, there's, you know, a lot of people are, you know, 20 year overnight success. <laughs> you know, it's not like we're, you know, suddenly we're, you know, doing so great. It's unless you do, which is awesome. But um, most of us have gradually grown our businesses and gradually improved. And so, um, you know, we eventually, you know, we became licensed teachers. We were living in the Bay Area and um, we were actually at, um, you just mentioned Tim before we started, Don and Pam's um, at a breathwork seminar. And somebody um, sent me an email and said, I see your class is full. Um, would you consider creating another class um, in like sooner than what you had scheduled? And so I, and, and I was like, well, maybe, you know, I, I kind of had like a rhythm and I decided, and, and then I put out an email and I said, you know, if anybody's interested in this class, you know, please get on the waiting list. Well, overnight, I had six people sign up. And I was like, Oh, well, I guess I better do the class sooner. So I sent out this email saying I'm adding this class. And five of the six people were like, thank you so much. And this is an interesting thing is because it, it was such a weird little trigger. Five of the six people signed up and were very, very grateful. One person sent me an email and I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what was going on with them, but it, I, they sent several emails over the course of one evening. <laughs> so they were, and the first thing he said was, um, I can't believe you charge this much for a class. And I was like, and, and that was the first email I read. And I didn't, I didn't even know how to respond because it was during the evening and, well, I was asleep. And then um, the next email was, you can find this information on YouTube. Why are you charging for this? I'm like, once again, you don't have to sign up. I, mean, I didn't really know what to say to him. Then he said, I think you should get a real job and do this for fun on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow. So and, and and what was weird is, is that one person made me feel terrible. The other five people who were, who were amazing, it didn't, it didn't make me, it didn't balance. Mm -hmm. And I realized I had my own money blocks that I needed to work through. So I, I, I just dove right. Well, first of all, I answered him and I said, clearly I'm not your teacher. Good luck on your journey. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not going to be the person that helps you. And I, I've never heard from him again. So, you know, hopefully he learned Reiki. Hopefully it helped him. Hopefully, you know, his life is better. And, and, you know, but he was a real lesson for me to really, really get into, to dive deeply into how we all are given gifts and, he, you know, the, the, and especially as women, I think it's, I mean, that's a whole topic in itself, but women, most Reiki practitioners are women and they look at it like, well, you know, there's that old, you know, behind every great man, there's a good woman. Well, there's, it's, it's not always like that. You know, there's a, there should be a lot of, there are a lot of amazing women who are healers who deserve to be recognized. And the thing is, you know, the utility company does not take a Reiki session as a payment for their, their services. They should. <laughs> they, they should. I mean, think of how much better the world would be if we could all just trade Reiki, but it doesn't work that way. So, uh, you know, I, I really had to kind of like find my own balance with doing healing work 
doing understanding that you know being compensated in some way was also was also important and um so that that's what got me where i am yeah. wow that's a just a great story because so many of us have had that over you know a variety of subjects right you know, and the things that we can find that have that internal part of like, oh, that really triggered me. And I love the way that you turned that around to, okay, what is it about that and moved it into a solution? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. What, what I mean, can I learn from this? The, um, and so the solution for me was to learn about money to learn about how and to to find some authors that I really and and um who I really respect and and I value their um their thoughts and the way they think of things and um and and to empower myself to think I'm worthy to earn that money and, and that's a key component to it cuz a lot of people feel like they they don't deserve it and and what what hit me fairly early on is that my son could add before he was two years old he understood math concepts before he was two he grew up he became an engineer he charges for his time people who can argue both sides of anything they that that's a gift. They grow up and they're lawyers. They charge for their time. People who can add and do all kinds of, you know, and end up being um, accountants. They charge for their time. We're not charging for our healing. We're charging for our time. And by remembering that, then you know, when you remember, like how, you know, like I have a a, a really good friend who has all kinds of modalities under her belt and she's learned all kinds of stuff. And when you go in for a healing session with her, it's like you trans, you know, it's transformational. And, you know, I'm always telling her you need to charge more money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, with, with everybody, you know, that the healing work that you do, that we do, especially with Reiki, because it, it's, of course, yes, it's a gift from God. I mean, that's how we kind of, you know, people say, oh, I sh I can't charge for this because it's a gift from God. Well, that's where I'm, I start in. I get on my soapbox about the accounting and engineering and lawyers, and they all charge for their time. Well, and there's such a specific um, historical basis for that. Yusui Sensei absolutely charged for his time and established his business as a, um, uh, I mean, established his Reiki practice as a business. And we just did a podcast with Justin Stein, and he was talking about how, you know, back in those days, Reiki was actually for the very elite. And um, they did charge money and also so then they could do free Reiki for those who didn't have the money. And so I think that's the other component of it. And even when I say that, you know, to, to make sure that I mention that, you know, we do a lot of free Reiki, we provide a lot of free resources, and that's all just part of it and the gifts and the caring that we have. Um, but even in saying all of that, sometimes I feel like, well, then I'm, you know, making sure I'm justifying it and and having that and so it always kind of shows me personally that same um, issue around it and not just reiki but i think at my age at 66 it was definitely a generational aspect to not wanting to make money or if you want to make money or not not wanting to make money, but money was bad and evil and mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the wrongs of the universe. And also um, that uh, if I wanted to make money, I had to work really hard for it. Right. 
that that was the other key piece. And so having that kind of, you know, voice in the back that is unknown and completely unconscious of my younger years and that that um, generational idea about about money and then also the gift and the challenge from my parents of work hard Mm -hmm. to make your money yeah we're the same age and so we grew up in the same generation and um you know you you they our parents had been in the depression yeah and or they grew up during the depression and so um we we were told if you want to if you want something you have to work really hard for it mm-hmm. and 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 you know like you the other thing the other point i wanted to make is that you're exactly right the thing about charging money for it is then that allows you to make the decisions about how you you give it away yes. like you know we do you do the podcasts you do Reiki shares, we do the same thing. We have a once a month a coffee with the camera Myers where people just hop on. We did it weekly during uh COVID. And um people just, you know, some of those people I, I mean, I think some of those people they didn't talk to anybody else all week long. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm sure that was the same thing with your groups. And so being able to provide that, um to me, that was like a huge gift for, for everyone. It was wonderful for us yeah, to be able to do it. Us, and it was yeah. also wonderful for, you know, the recipients of it. Well, but I think it's important to remember that we're the ones that get to decide what we give away, you know, like, so. Well, and if you're in a job, you're not able to do that because you're working right in the job and you know it's funny that you both were talking about the general generational aspects of it and being in the you know next generation being in millennial we have other generational pieces to money and money issues as we have come into this uh a greater awareness of imbalances with how the money system might be working um to to say it <laughs> to say it in a certain way. Um, (laughs) But what I I actually, it's really funny, Shelly, because I didn't relate it until this moment. I just had this situation yesterday where, because to me, and I know you, I might've even originally, when we originally had our, our podcast together years ago, talked about similar concepts and that, and just this idea that also you have to remember that money is an energetic exchange. And, uh, you know, where do you put that energy? And so I just had this, this um, happen yesterday where this whole idea of the energetic exchange of because I was, you know, considering paying somebody else for something in a positive way. Um, and so I also get to kind of vote with my dollars, right? I get to put that energetic exchange towards somebody that I, um, and it's like a small business. So it's not, you know, politics or anything like that. It's just a small business here locally. And I had this whole, like I, this, this kind of, Oh, look at, I am having this energetic exchange for this person. It's a small business. I'm able to help support this small business and something I believe in and have an energetic exchange with them. And that's where I want to see this happen to, you know, where I want to see this energetic exchange happen. And then, then extrapolating it back to being in a Reiki business of, well, wait a second, I want to see that energetic exchange for more of this work because so that more of this work can exist so that I can have this energetic exchange for more people. And then you extrapolate that out into the larger picture. You know, that is a part of what we're all talking about when we when we talk about this inequality with money in this moment in time. And can't we go into this energetic exchange with Reiki business as well and healing businesses, you know, right. Say that any kind of healing business. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and to me, I mean, that's the key. Like we, 
the better we do as with our businesses, the more we can support other people who have small businesses and, you know, and, or we can, you know, support people that we decide that we feel like need a free Reiki session or, you know, somebody that you you want to free Reiki classes, you know, whatever kind of gift you want to use, it's, it's your choice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so like, you know, our, we all have expenses and, and you're right. This isn't an energy, the energy, there is energy of money. Yeah. And I think the more we make it, the more we do the healing work within ourselves around it, because there is such a culturally created process around that. I think that it's helpful to others to be able to do that, you know, that work within themselves so that um, it does make it okay for people to want and to have a Reiki business. And I loved your point earlier that, you know, many of us worked two jobs to be able to start your Reiki business and to have a business to support you starting your Reiki business. There's very few of us that were, you know, just able to do that without that process as a part of it. Um, And so just also when we do that work for ourselves, it, it does ripple out to others in the industry, our families. And, you know, as I think many of us care about also the world, like our communities and, you know, Right. Yeah. yeah. So we're sharing a lot about the the why and the you know the understanding of of like how kind of that I guess sometimes the controversy of you know the the idea that we're not supposed to charge money for Reiki and then of course why that is just a necessity and an exchange. So let's talk a little bit about the how to, like, where do people, when they recognize this, this struggle within, what, how are they, how are you talking about Reiki to help with that? Okay. So there's a few things. One is (laughs) self-Reiki. Yeah. Like, that's like, that's like the big go-to. Like, if you do nothing else, just do self-Reiki. And, you know, to just spend time like, and, and, you know, and journaling, I think that's a really key way to like, ask yourself, what are my first money memories? What are my first ways of, um, you know, how did I spend money? How was I, how was I looked at in my family as with money? And for instance, in my family, my, my younger sister she probably still has the first quarter she ever made. I love her, <laughs> but she, and, and I was the one who was like, Oh, that'll buy me some candy. Let's go. And so I was always the one that was like, let's go have fun. And she was always the one, like she would trade in her dollar allowances till she got, when she got a five and then she would get, have two fives and she'd trade them in for a 10. Like the, it was a whole thing in our family, but, but you know, like, so you, there's this thing that happens is in, in your money memories, you become like in where I became like, oh, I can't hold on to money. Mm-hmm. I don't hold on to money well. So I need to, you know, so I needed to work on that. Like, wow, just because I made, you know, $10 doesn't mean I have to spend $10 like, or whatever, you know, and that's a, that's a thing that that's a deep seated thing. in people is like, where do your thoughts come from? Well, most of them come from when we were children. Like, so how do you heal that? You got to, you got to go in and dig all that old stuff out and then create new, new thoughts. Like, you know, whether, you know, you do um, mantras to, you know, or, or I know just enough about feng shui to be dangerous. <laughs> and, and so I set up, um, I set up a, a, a Reiki grid in the prosperity corner of my house and put little notes underneath the grid. Like you are prosperous. 
you are, you know, little mantras, um, lots of, you know, what it, things that were made sense to me. And so that's kind of the thing, like you need to, that it's just a really good way to go in and kind of like keep remembering, like reprogramming our, our brain and Reiki helps with that. Because if you will sit there and do self Reiki and start talking to yourself and say, you know, that, that old programming is old programming. And now I can create new because we can start fresh every day. That's, that's just so fascinating. Because um, first of all, with the feng shui, with the prosperity grid, it's like, duh, I can't believe I don't have that. <laughs> like, what have I been <laughs> like? I, I kind of even hate to admit it. Like, really? <laughs> I have a I have a money tree in my prosperity bug wire corner of my house. And I swear to God, when I move that money tree, like if I move it to water it or, you know, there's different reasons that you move it. It is like almost immediate that I notice there's either an expense or there's, you know, all of these things that can happen. And I'm like, move it back. I got to move it back. <laughs> And I don't care if that is psychosomatic. I don't care. I'm telling you, it's a thing. uh, Even my husband noticed it. He's like, put the money tree back. (laughs) I mean, and that's the thing is like, it's, it's, it's important to like, know these things. And, you know, and you can, you can apply the Reiki grid to any section of the Bagua. You know, like I have a, a grid set up in the knowledge corner for students to create students or to have, you know, to have students coming into our, our life. And, um, you know, there's just so you know, there's nine uh, grids set up in my home. Oh, (laughs) I do. I have lots of grids. I just hadn't specifically put them into the Bagua, into the feng shui corners yeah it's just like, a great and little with combination. specific intention for that particular space yeah i yeah. love that and i also love because of course it immediately when you talked about you know what are your earliest money memories and my mom was really like she she was about teaching us how to make money like that was a focus of hers because she grew up so poor And that was like, I'm going to fix this and I'm going to fix it in my kids. And I remember that my earliest memory of that was I was taking piano lessons in third grade and I decided I didn't want to do it anymore. And um, she, she gave me the whole talk and said, you need to learn to play the piano. So when you grow up, and you get married, you can teach piano lessons and make your own money no matter where your husband lives because of his job. Like you think about a message like that and all through my whole life, you know, childhood and everything, she was always about, okay, she was a serial entrepreneur. So (laughs) she had created lots of opportunities that I could make money through her businesses and do things, but I always had to work. So, you know, it wasn't like it was handed to me, but I always had to work. But that's my earliest money memory. Wow. Better take piano lessons because you're going to have to teach it. And, And how do you love the other idea of, so wherever your husband lives, even if it's a small town or whatever, somebody will always want piano lessons. And yeah, it's interesting as a kind of on the opposite end of that, uh, even though, you know, I wouldn't say you were as uh, Colleen as, as much as grandma was your mom on that, on the opposite, I have total, I had to, I don't anymore, had to work through genetic memories from the other side of the family. Um, my dad's mom, uh, very affected by the the depression, lived in the Dust Bowl during the depression, and always had this kind of messaging of, um, you know, don't want to be very poor, and um, and that translated to me. I used to have the same fear, even though I didn't see them very much growing up. They were they just lived far away. There wasn't, you know, they just lived far away, so we didn't see them a whole lot growing up. 
And I would use the same words that she used about fears that I had about money, even though it wouldn't have been able to directly come from her because it wasn't like it was this learned thing from her. It was genetic this, memory, this genetic memory, genetic fears that I've had to work on healing and kind of like the whole opposite side of that spectrum. Yeah. And, 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 um, you know, healing all of that stuff is like, if you don't, if you don't heal it, you're just going to keep carrying it around. So you were recommending like journaling with journaling. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> how to. Sorry. No, that was our fault. Back to the how to. Really yeah, and, and the, yeah. um, you know, setting up Reiki grids and doing self Reiki. I mean, that, that really is the, the best way is, you know, and, and then, to, then the other thing, um, that I I did was um, aside from journaling and asking myself those questions was creating a gratitude journal, mm -hmm. like all the things that I was grateful for. Now, because I'm me, I came up with like these rules because there had to be rules <laughs> so I could break them, but I had rules. And the rule, the rule was I would write down three things every day. And I could never repeat them. Oh. So, so you go through the first, you know, week. You go through, you know, your <laughs> spouse, your kids, your dogs, you know, your house, your job, your whatever, right? And then, <laughs> but that's where the real magic happens. Because then you're finding the things that you're looking for things so that you can write them down at night. Like I was, I would be, you know, I remember writing down one time, I'm grateful that every light was green on my way to the office. I'm grateful that, you know, that at the grocery store, I was the first, I didn't have to wait in line. I'm grateful. And so you start really finding the things. And the more you are sending out that gratitude, the more, more it comes back to you. It's like this magnet. I feel like that with kindness too. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think of, well, look at those two are two of Yusui Sensei's ideals. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. just for today, I will be grateful. And just for today, I will be kind. Mm -hmm. And I always add to the kind, I will always be kind to every living thing, including myself. Yes. I always add the including myself because it's so easy to be kind to everybody else and not, and then have negative talk to yourself. Like I'm such. Right. A I know. I think of sometimes the stuff that I would say to myself, I would never, I wouldn't even think it about somebody else. Like not only would I not say it, I wouldn't think it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's been one. I think I'm getting better at that now, but it's it's that's been a journey. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, when I really look at the at the the pathway of following that one, gratitude is the one that healed that the most in me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because gratitude when you when you focus on gratitude, you just it, it just shifts how you think. Yeah. So that's, that's a really good plan. To, I know. I was like, I like that exercise of, yeah. you know, maybe not giving myself the rules. Like, <laughs> I know we both you know, could rule, rules, but no, I actually think that's really a good idea because you do get into these because I genuinely am grateful for these things, but uh, the, but you do get into this kind of, rotation of the things that you're grateful for as opposed to really intentionally going through your life your day or Colleen said she said it I don't think it actually picked up on the recording we'll say indoor plumbing that is actually what I meant to say yeah <laughs> you said toilet I'll just have to say it it, it came out toilet <laughs> <laughs> what am I grateful for? <laughs> well, I'm grateful for both of those things: indoor plumbing, toilets, yeah. all of it, water. I always water. think that about re refrigeration. I'm oh, very yeah. grateful for refrigeration and what what we are able as a species to do with refrigeration. So, 
Um, but the just the idea of then even points to because okay, I put that on my list and I put indoor plumbing on my list, but I can't repeat that. So, you know, what do I go through again to kind of um continue this this idea of gratitude in a different in a more expansive way? Um, and so that's that's a really neat exercise to do. Well, and yeah. to, to look for it that way. Yeah. yeah. Because once you're, once you're looking, then you find it because it's really easy to kind of go through the day, like just going to the grocery store, doing whatever you, it's on your to-do list and checking it all off. And then all of a sudden the day's over and you're starting over again. And, you know, it's, it's really easy. It's a whole lot easier if you're out there like, Oh, look at those people are so nice. So you're grateful for that. And, you know, it just, it works better that way. Well, and using Reiki energy to help do that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the things that I learned with the gratitude ceremony years ago. And and it was actually somebody out that was receiving the gratitude ceremony and afterwards came up to me and said, I never really realized that Reiki actually gives you gratitude. It's part of its life force. And, And that clicked in that moment, like, oh, it actually... It actually puts it into us so we can we can notice it. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you talked about some feng shui principles. What about some other things like chakras? Um, how does this relate into the chakras? I know there's a so, lot. So so yeah, that that's a good thing. So I a good question. I think that um, you know when when uh, most of us who are doing reiki on people you know we know we can check their chakras and that's you know kind of like at the beginning we learned that i mean i didn't even know what chakras were uh when i first learned reiki but eventually i i did and um so any of the chakras any of those that have blockages can or or uh, that are compromised. I don't like the word blockages on chakras. I say compromised. Yeah. So if they're compromised in some way, then, you know, and it's not, I mean, the whole idea that it's the root chakra, which is, I mean, that is a big component of it, but you know, even your heart chakra can prevent money from coming to you. If you are, you know, if you're, if you have a heart chakra that's compromised, So just, you know, using the Biosyn scanning to just like check yourself or check your, your clients and to kind of help clear out old stuff, um, you know, is a great way to, I mean, I I always give my clients homework (laughs) when they come in, they're like, wait, I just paid for today. I'm like, nope. You paid for today and then a follow-up because we're going to talk about this. So, you you know, you had blockages in your heart. We need, you know, you need to kind of look at that. It's not my job. It's your job to look at it. And then we can make sure that it stays cleared out. Yeah. So. Um, I like so- that. I like that concept because you would think it would only be in the root or sacral. I think that that is a. Uh, pretty common and i would imagine probably a, a common place you find a find a money uh story in there mm-hmm. that maybe doesn't belong or sh- you know needs to be healed but you know it makes it would it kind of makes sense that there's a possibility that something in in your third eye something about your intuition is is compromised it's off that is then you know creating this block towards your healed relationship with abundance and financial abundance. Right. I mean, you know, and and the thing is, is often it goes back to something happened in a childhood or past life, you know, things that you don't necessarily remember, but yet, you know, like, you know, maybe it wasn't safe. I mean, we all, we all, we've talked about that before. Like it's not safe 
to do healing work, you know, in the, in, pa- in our past life maybe. And so we've shut down our third eye and by shutting it down, it's blocking people from coming to you, yeah. which then, you know, c- creates this whole spiral downward. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that is, um, it, you know, it, and there's so much that we take on, I think as healers, we are, those of us that are drawn to this work are so naturally empathic that we take on things that can happen in our past lives or in this lifetime, um, but also in our culturally created selves, you know, we can take on the responsibility of fixing everything and therefore, um, you know, not try, how do I want to say this? If we, when we take it on, even if it doesn't belong to us, or if we do have that kind of desire to want to heal, to want to fix the things that we have in our, in society or people's lives, it can then also kind of create this, um, uh, block towards it. And I think that our empathy can create such a big part of that because we are so empathic and we part of the reason that we're called to being healers is it's to heal ourselves, but also to heal others and be the change that we want to see in the world. And Reiki helps so much with that empathy piece of that piece of it. Can you kind of talk to that as, as far as like when we're then relating it to this money piece? Well, I I think, you know, the, the thing is, is um, with, with heal, with healers, people in people people who do do healing work i don't you know anyway yeah. that it's a whole thing for me yeah. um yeah. no i get it we with the words healers it's like <laughs> we know that it's the other things doing the healer healing yeah. it's easier to say it. but 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 other than that um what i think is that on uh, there's a level of this empathy that we have we take on um a, a like a parent role with people sometimes like we want to take it and fix it for them instead of empowering people to fix it for themselves and so um i feel like reiki has been a big help for me with that because i have learned my own inner authority which is my ability to to handle my stuff but it also helps me realize that I'm not helping anybody by giving them the answer. Like I might know the answer. I might be a hundred percent sure I know the answer, but if I let them work it out for themselves, then it might be a different answer and it might be exactly what they need. You know? So that's what I, th- where I think Reiki has really helped helps all of us is to just kind of have that um, separation without trying to take on too much. Now, I mean, the thing is, is like when I, when some of us who do Reiki, we feel what everybody else, but their other person is feeling. And I, somebody, so I I don't remember who it was. I don't remember if even they were a Reiki person, but they said, you know, empathy or a feeling that you take on, if you allow yourself to just feel it, it won't get stuck in your body it just processes through you if you let it if you let yourself just feel it so like sometimes when i'm working with people i'll catch myself feeling cuz you, you blend you meld together when you're doing reiki and and i can just allow that to process through instead of it being stuck and i think that's the reiki part of it is like knowing that it, this isn't mine i don't need to take this on and did that answer your question? <laughs> What's that word? No, that did answer my question. Sorry, my <laughs> husband was making noise outside of my my window. Like, stop making so much noise <laughs> in a podcast. <laughs> no, I, I think that that's, um, you know, it's like how we all process empathy is, um, I think, like you said, all of it is 
the Reiki energy. And I agree with what you said when you said healer, like I don't consider myself a healer. I consider myself to do healing work. The healing is the other person that's doing their own healing, you know? Right. Um, but I think, um, uh, that, you know, it's, it is to help the, the Reiki energy, the work is helping others to come to their own answers, their own way of processing empathy, come to their healed, healed empathy. It would be, so it's like you, you know, you're not overtaking on everybody else's stuff. Um, but I also liked that it's also bringing everybody to their own answers around financial abundance, money, because for some that looks differently than what it, for you, it looks differently than what it means for me, than what it means for Colleen, than what it means for so many different people. And that Reiki energy and doing this work gets to those answers in an authentic way. Um, and what's right for them and their situation and even where they live, some of those that come into the, the play, because for some people that might mean that they are collaborating with a bunch of people. For some people, it might be co-op, you know, for some people, it looks differently for everybody, but to go into their own truth and their own answers outside of the um, culturally created part of this that is one's bad, one's good, you know, like there's, right. there's, it's a different answer for each of us. And, and, and that just made me think of something that, you know, there's a whole wave or a layer, I guess, of the energy that people that, that don't have a lot of money are proud of that. They're proud that they that they have been able to survive. They're fighters. They, you know, they have, and that people with a lot of money are bad. I mean, we, you know, and there's a lot of stuff in the media about that kind of whole thing. Like, you know, and but you don't see the people who are, you know, giving away or helping other people quietly, you know, behind the scenes. That's the kind of thing that, um, you know, be because it news that kind of news doesn't sell. And so, um, you know, I think it's important for people to, um, you know, everybody has to decide how they want to, they want to deal with money situations themselves. I mean, if, if you're really proud of um, that, you've been able to survive and do whatever with as little money as possible well then i i kind of from gotten to the point where you do you you know i i i i've taught a, a lot of classes about this and um we did um and it, it's it is fascinating how people are um it it really is hard for people to charge more money and how to, how we work through it, you know, like, so. You know, I, I found it really difficult um, in starting my business with Reiki and making money with it and charging money for it. And initially when I started with it, I, I actually was very specific that I didn't want to charge for it because I, I didn't want to turn it into a business. I had already been, you know, I was already had a successful business, so I wasn't looking for something else. And I liked what I was doing. And then Reiki became so compelling <clears throat> that I, I just had to switch. Like I, I had to earn an income. So if I didn't focus on it and didn't make an income from it and have it financially support me, I couldn't do as much of it as I wanted to do. And what really helped me that, you know, being an overgiver was it helped me when I understood that my money issues about charging money were actually getting imposed on my students and my clients and particularly clients, because I was like, oh, I, I, I can give you a Reiki session and no worries, you know, I, I, I don't need to charge, or if I did charge, then I was awkward about it. And finally, I realized that it was actually imposing on my clients my own awkwardness around it. 
And once I recognized that, it, it was able to switch. And it just became so much easier for everybody. And not just because it was a business, but it shifted everything because that's just what's normal. So just like you say, with all of the other people that you mentioned, people get paid for their services and paid for their time. And what was happening is people were feeling awkward about making appointments with me because there wasn't an exchange and it was awkward for them. So when I started charging and it just became like, well, every other normal business practice, you know what you're going to pay, you know what your time is going to be, what are the services that are provided. And so if I go to my hairstylist, I, I know what I'm going to pay for it, what is going to happen in it, and how long it'll usually take. If I go to the acupuncturist, it's the same thing, massage therapist, physician. Well, we don't always know what that's going to cost. But <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the grocery store. The yeah. grocery store, right? You you know, you go in and you buy. I mean, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. But oh, uh, go ahead. You, go into the, you go into the grocery store. The prices are there. You pay it or you don't buy it. Like, yeah. you know, I might decide to buy, you know, the the generic brand of green beans instead of the other brand, you know? Well, it's funny that you say that because, and this is a different subject, but Robin and I were just talking about it the other day. And, and I don't think it was that long ago, but maybe it was a long time that you could figure that one grocery bag was going to be about $10. And then, you know, then it went up to like, okay, you figure that it's going to be about $25 per grocery bag. And then now the last time I went, it was like $50 a bag. I was like, yeah. oh my God. And I know, that, I mean, I've been observing it, of course, but you know, it's, it's anyway, that's another subject. <laughs> Inflation <laughs> is a whole other subject. Inflation yeah, that's a whole other thing. Subject, and, but, and also and, it's hot because, you know, as Reiki practitioners, we have to support ourselves through these, Yeah, these, you know, this is yeah. part of what we're talking about, Shelly, is that we have families and we have bills, we have grocery bills. And, you know, we want to be able to do this work that we're passionate about, that's important and be able to, to live our, our lives that can, you know, support ourselves through these things. Right. And, and then um, the other, the other piece of that is we have to be able to earn enough so that we aren't working all the time mm -hmm. because if you know um you cannot ha if you don't take care of yourself then you can't be doing this kind of work and if you don't have you know find a way to take be able to take time off and spend time with your family and your friends and you know then what are we doing it for <laughs> Like, why are we working? I mean. You know, another another one that occurs to me in this moment, too, about all of it is particularly those of us that are, are re really doing this work full time and for a length of time. You know, back when I first was starting with Reiki and going back to those days of what is my mission statement? Like, why am I doing this? What? And. You know, and one of the journeys that was so surprising to me was so that children could grow up with Reiki as a um, a mainstream practice that parents knew. Take my take my child to a, a Reiki practitioner. They're they're stressed. They need this. They need this, and Reiki can help them. But the other big one that really relates to this is that we can raise our children, we can tell our students who are adults and whoever at whatever age that they can financially support themselves by having a Reiki practice, therefore a Reiki business, therefore more people will know about Reiki, more people will receive Reiki and the benefits of Reiki. And it's also for anyone out there considering it, it is such a lovely way 
to spend your day and your time in, you know, in a, it's a lovely way to work <laughs> yes. and yeah. to, and to have, be financially supported. And so I really truly would love that for my grandkids. And of course, obviously my daughter who does this too, but I mean, we just get the, the nicest, kindest emails and people and community and support. And it's fascinating every day and interesting and generates, you know, all these like just amazing ways to get to, to do things. Yeah. And, and, you know, the way that, I mean, the fact that, I mean, we are helping people, which is yeah. who we are, you know, like as, I mean, no matter what you were doing, have been doing before you were doing Reiki, that was probably your personality anyway. I mean, those people who want to help people, that's how they get into this. And this is a beautiful way to help people. Yes. And that we get to help people and animals. And animals. And the planet. Yeah. Yeah. And the planet. And now kids. Like and that's this kids. whole thing that we're. Kid Reiki. Kid Reiki that we're working with. That's a whole nother energy. Yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a whole other part of it too, is to help Reiki become mainstream where people can support themselves. They can fulfill that wanting to help others. They can, you know, have it as a profession that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's so true that, you know, also that well i guess this is my question shelly is um balancing your you know we because there are also small businesses you know and um so there's that aspect to it um so how balancing like those kinds of practical things about having a business um i know for me i've done like i've had work come through with me about i have thrive and I have ambition and, you know, that's part of my authentic self and personality and being okay with that, that fact. And, um, also this idea of the spiritual side of this business and the spiritual side of ourselves. Um, and so how, what are ways that you have learned and teach people on, you know, how to balance those things? So there's a, well, there's a couple of things. One of them is to, to do the things that you love to do and outsource the things that you hate doing. Like if you don't want to be an accountant, don't be your own accountant, hire somebody because some people love to be accountants. I mean, it's, it, that makes no sense to me, but there are people that love it. And so those people that love it should get compensated for that. And that frees up time for you to do the things that you love and which is this healing work. And, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's people that can help you do all. I mean, I, I, I remember in a class with Colleen, the first time I heard this, it was like, duh. Um, she said, as a Reiki practitioner, you're an entrepreneur. I mean, why did I not get that i don't know but uh, she's when she said that i was like oh yeah i'm starting my own business like that this is this is i'm an entrepreneur well the thing is is that the, the things that i could do there are things i i can figure out and do and sometimes i do them but i try to you know i've found that outsourcing to people who love it is a win, win, win for everybody. And, um, you know, I mean, there's things that I would, well, for instance, and, and this is kind of a joke in, in our, with Mike and I, he, um, he had back surgery last uh, in May. 
And I had a class scheduled in California right after that. I mean, within a couple of weeks of him doing that. And people, there were a lot of people signed up and we didn't know when his back surgery was going to be. So suddenly they have it. And so it had been like two and a half weeks and he was fine to stay home by himself. So I went to California and taught, but I walked into the the classroom and I remember like for just a second looking around going, wait, the chairs aren't set up. Like this was not part of my, like when there's people who do things for you, like this is, that's kind of his thing. He's always make sure that all the logistics are handled. That's his, that's who he is. He, he loves doing that. And so I had to like set up chairs and make sure there was, you know, cups in the kitchen for people to have, you know, water and, you know, all the logistics that I never really think about. And so that's the thing is like you, there are lots of things that you can outsource. I mean, there's obviously things that you might have to do, but, um, you know, teaching and sharing Reiki, you know, if you can, if you can have more time to do that, then you can, then it it becomes this beautiful circle where people can. So I think also for our listeners, I'd like to clarify that one of the things we talk about all the time Um, is that, you know, you can have a Reiki practice and not have a business. If you have a Reiki business, you will have a Reiki practice. And many people, you know, really are truly practicing Reiki for themselves, family, friends, and really not even considering that they want to charge money for it. And I think it's also going back to the historical basis you know, when I first learned Reiki, Mrs. Takata, I, I learned in the Reiki Alliance um, tradition. And uh, it was taught at that time that Mrs. Takata taught that you always had to charge money for Reiki. And remember, I didn't really want to have a business at that time. So that was very awkward for me and feeling like I couldn't barter and I couldn't charge and I had to always charge money. So that was another transition and then understanding that that actually wasn't really there wasn't a a historical basis for that idea that it was okay to barter it was okay to um you know give reiki for free because that's where i was at in my life and with my reiki practice at the time and it was about self-reiki and it was about my own personal journey Um, And then when it switched into a business and, you know, then those Reiki practices moved into a business, just like you mentioned, that was one of the things I was very aware of is that it was a small business, the same as any other small business. And at that time, that was the early 2000s. So small business then on the foundational level is still the same today. But the details and the accomplishments of um, of completing the tasks of a small business are definitely different today than they were in the 2000s. And so thank goodness, because there's a lot more conveniences with it. Um, but I think that that's, that's a really important piece for people to understand if they are going to have a small business. And I recently saw a whole kind of panel on starting a Reiki, uh, on Reiki questions, and somebody asked about having a Reiki business, and most of the people answered it as, well, Reiki will just guide you. Yes, but you also need small business practices, and you do have to consider the things that uh, any small business, it's a professional service business and any other professional service business does. And so, you know, like you mentioned, accounting, taxes, which by the way, Robin has an accounting degree. And so, which- (laughs) That works out. Well, it does. And when she was, when she went to college, I was like, so surprised. I was like, oh, you wanna, how how did I not know that you wanted to be an accountant? 
Um, and, you know, like you say, I'm so glad because she's, she's way more left brain logical than I am. But, but anyway, you know, it's like right now I'm paying my taxes. I'm doing all those practical things that have to be done. I, I need to, you know, do the marketing that is in con- current in today's world. So now in today's world that we didn't have when I started was social media. You know, those are small business practices. Not everybody has to do that, depending on the level of of business that you want to have. But, you know, websites, technology, um, and then a big one that we talk about a lot, too, is success consciousness, which I think is what you're talking about, is, you know, really that money abundance is going into that success consciousness that then applies to, yes, I can do all these small business practice things that I need to do. And I don't mean it to be intimidating to people um, because I also am the type to say, just start. <laughs> you know, The business practices will show up. The need for which ones you need will show up when you need them and they're endless. So, you know, just start and feel confident to just start. Um, But I think that success consciousness, we should talk that a little bit about that, because I think that's also what, what you are teaching in the way you're teaching this subject. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's the, the, it's the worthiness of uh, the practitioner that they deserve to be successful um, you know, all those layers of life that we've, you know, that we have to undo to, um, you know, I, I talk about people like they're artichokes because not like an onion, you got to peel off all those layers to get to the heart. And sometimes um, getting to the heart is how you get that success consciousness. Like you have to get there. And so undoing all those you know, just, you know, and part of it is just deciding, like, I'm going to do well, like, this is the week I'm going to do well. And, and, you know, people show up. So it's funny you say that, because as you are a mentor for students coming into the ICRT license program, and I am, and I just had this conversation with one of my students last week, and saying, Remember when you give it a number, because that's, that's a lot of times, you know, that's the teaching is say how much that you want to make this year, for instance, or next year or whatever, you know, like actually state the number. And I I reminded her to say net Mm -hmm. because the first time I was taught that, because I, when I had my other business prior to this one, I actually did take small business classes like at the community college, which is a great resource for it anyway. And the Small Business Association, lots of good online classes, YouTubes, things like that now. But anyway, the very first time when I had my fiber business called the Confetti Collection, and um, I had set this number this is it. I want to make this much this year. And I did, but I forgot to say net. net. So I grossed that amount, but I didn't plan for the expenses. So I actually net about a third of the number I set. <laughs> so <'cause my laughs> expenses were high. So just put that out there, everybody say, yeah, when you pick your number, say, I want to And, and actually, oh, here's another one that was a good one. So because I was awkward about saying, I want this to make me money, like point blank, I want dollars for the, you know, not just for this, but anything, you know, and getting to that. So I used to play around with it and I'd say, okay, and I do my journeys and things. I'd say, okay, I, I'm asking for abundance. Well, we had that 30 acre farm at the time and everything in Oregon grows abundantly. 
And I had an abundance of grass and an abundance of moles and an abundance of water and all these things. The land just went, we can do that. <laughs> and just everything grew, you know, blackberry bushes, coyotes. I mean, we just had everything, this big, huge abundance. I was like, okay, I'm going to actually say what I really mean. Like, dollars in the bank because the farm was super expensive like you know having that much land it was only 30 acres but 30 acres is a lot yeah. and um you know it's a it's it's an expensive lifestyle people don't think of it you think of it as kind of humble our house was a 120 year old farmhouse so you know by all appearances it was humble but you know, it was expensive. So I was asking for the money that I needed to be able to manage the land the way we needed to do it. And, and our kids were teenagers and all of the expenses. So I'm asking for abundance. <laughs> well, it goes, yeah, check we it out. That. Everything grew. Well, and teenagers are expensive. Well, and teenagers, know. grandchildren are expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and but they're wonderful. I, I wouldn't trade so it. Fun. I know. Um, Luna warned me. You know, and, and, <laughs> you know so the other, th the, one of the things that just popped into my head was that when I first started doing Reiki as a practice, not as a business, I didn't, I didn't charge money because I, for me, the experience was enough. Yeah. And and also, you know, like when I would do Reiki on Mike, obviously I'm not going to charge him. I mean, I tried, but he didn't, he wouldn't <laughs> fork over any cash. He'd say, I'll take out the garbage. And I'd be like, all right, that's fine. So, <laughs> fair, that's know, and so, but there's so always some, exchange. as long as there's an exchange, yeah. I mean, you know, when it's bartering. And so for me, the exchange part, when I first started, and I want to make sure people understand this is that. The experience, get you know, working with people who have all different kinds of situations, it, it was it was it was like going to college. Like I, I mean, I didn't feel like I was losing any money because I had all these opportunities to learn about what do I do now, what where do I go, what do I do, you know, and and so I I think it's important for people to know that you know working on your money mindset does not mean that you start off your business at the idea that you're going to charge, you know, a thousand dollars an hour or whatever it is that you want to get to, you know, that it, it there's, it's incremental, you know, well, I have to say, I have to really like, Whoa, thousand dollars an hour. <laughs> well, there are, <laughs> you, said that. Yeah, you could ask oh, for that. I hadn't even thought about asking for that. <laughs> Got to up my game. <laughs> yeah. Well, you probably could get that. <laughs> um, you would probably work less. And that's another thing, you know, like, you know, how much do you want to work? Charge more, work less. Well, and I have to say for myself that I find it fascinating because that question is like, well, would I say, okay, then I only need to work this much because I've made this much? Or would I say, oh, I still need to work a whole bunch and then I will make a whole bunch more. So I think you have that to navigate through too. Right. And and that goes back to when you were a kid where you're yep. supposed to be working all the time. Work all the like, time and make money. I, I mean, was, I had an astrologer yeah. just recently tell me that I needed to do more fun things that my life was work. And I'm like, but I have fun at work. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the hard part, right? <laughs> that is the hard part. <laughs> it's like, I love doing what I'm doing. I Yeah. I was like, what do you mean? I do. I'm doing fun stuff all the time. Yeah. Well, and I think too, the other, the other kind of piece of that, when we were like, when I was a kid, there was this um, idea too, of like, um, you know, needing to be the millionaire billionaire lifestyle, where it's like, well, wait a second, though, I, my freedom wants to be time, but how do I, you know, that's where I want to get to contentment with my life fulfillment with my life. So I don't necessarily need that. Not that it's a, a, a money issue. It's just that culturally created belief that, okay, how can I have 
the money that I want to support the lifestyle that I want? And do I need to, as Colleen was saying, you know, continue, oh, wait, do I need more and more and more and more? And releasing that culturally created belief. But then, and this is all process, right? Because then there is also the peace, but that also doesn't mean that I have to have the, and if you want that, that's okay. It's not a judgment around that. Um, but it also doesn't mean need to mean that without having that, I need to have the poverty mindset that I need to have the, you know, lack mindset. I can, there is a place that I can get to that is, takes care of my needs. My family gives me freedom, gives me the things that I want that doesn't have to be this continual search for more and more and more also. Like there is that middle ground that can be both if that's what you want. And that was actually a kind of a culturally held belief that I had to release that one doesn't doesn't equate the other. That just because I don't need to be this ultra millionaire that they present in the movies and, you know, different things like that doesn't mean that I also have to be not comfortable and, you know, have issues around money from the complete opposite end of that spectrum. Right. And, you know, um, just realizing that, you know, there's, there's, on the internet, there's a bunch of different choices. I I don't know who has them exactly, but you can Google value list and go through and see what your top values are because there's hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if time is your number one value, then, then you work from that place. You, you work from, do I, you know, does this add more time to my free time or does this take away from it? Can I work with, find somebody to help me so that I can do more of this, you know? Yeah. Well, and what's interesting is that with that, that doesn't also always mean that, well, with time, like, okay, how can my business support me financially to have more time? You know, like that is a part of it. It's not meaning that, oh, by having time doesn't equate to also money. My, my business can also, okay. So how do I make the money that I want in order to have the time? that I want. So yeah, there is that these, these ideas as well. And I think, um, I think, cause I know that we have to kind of wrap up what I think that you've given some kind of good ways to go about some tools. So like, what is a, just since we've kind of talked about it throughout the whole podcast, what are just a few things that people can start doing tomorrow that can, shift their relationship with money and start to bring in, start to have the healing, start to also have that, um, the clear path to creating more financial abundance in their life to resolve money issues, all of that. So what are, let's give us just a few things you can start with, right? Um, I would say, of course, self-reiki. That's like number one, always. The other, one of the other things is to, um, I think a lot of us, and when I say this because I recognize it, um, is to take our head out of the sand and realize where we are financially. Like really look at where our finances are. Do we really need to spend $100 a week at Starbucks? Maybe we do. Maybe that's where you meet people, you know, whatever, I, no judgment. But do you need to, uh, you know, when Mike and I first started our business, we got rid of cable TV. And, um, you know, that saved us a ton of money because we didn't really watch it anyway. So why would we spend that? So just take your head out of the sand and look at where am I spending money and where can I, where can I eliminate things? Where am I losing money that I don't really need to be losing money? Because that's also part of the how much money you need to make. Mm. Like if you can figure out, okay, so I make this much money and I spend this much money, then if you, you know if you're spending more than you're making, obviously that doesn't work. But if you're if you can figure out ways to start to eliminate some of your expenses and and everybody's got their own things. like some people, really love watching TV. So that would not be a thing, but they might, you know, give up, you know, vacations or whatever. So 
I feel like that's, that's a huge piece of it. And also, you know, the journaling and remembering like where you're, you know, like I said before, you're like getting, getting back to why do I even have these beliefs? Why do I, you know, and catching yourself, like listening to that self-talk, because that's a big piece of it too, because you, you hear, you, you do these things out of habit. You know, you say these things to yourself out of habit and you're like, oh, you walk into a store. Oh, I can't afford that. Well, maybe you could. You just couldn't pay your house payment. Like there's things that you can do. You could spend it on, but you choose to maybe be responsible and make pay your bills. So, you know, to me, it's like one of the tricks um, I remember doing is I put $100 in my wallet one time and um, I just went and wandered all over the mall. And I was like, would I buy this? Could I buy this? I could buy this. I could buy that. And it was a fascinating exercise to think, oh, I could have something if I really wanted it. It's just I would have to choose not to have something else. And it was a really um, great exercise to, like, what do you really want? And I, I think that's um, kind of the, you know, learning, you know, figuring out your values are, you know, I, I got back in the car with my $100. <laughs> I was going to say, I might have been like your sister. I'm keeping my $100. <laughs> well, you and my sister have almost the same birthday, so I'm pretty sure you would. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that was, a, a, I was both because my big value as a kid, you know, I would make my money and my big value was that we lived down the street. Um, from a horse stable and there were some kids that had a horse and unbeknownst to their parents they were letting me give them money to ride their horse and so that was I <laughs> save up my money to go do that until their father caught them <laughs> so, and had to discontinue it and, and so that ended that so then I switched to you and went to the store and bought candy yeah <laughs> so, yeah. The, the remember those big sweet tarts. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, it makes my mouth just uh -huh. already just from even thinking about those. Like, oh, it used to just kill me. <laughs> but you had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I I think just like looking at it, really, really looking at it and and looking at, you know, what you're you know, where you're spending money, where you're, you know, earning money and pay attention to, you know, maybe you only need to up your, you know, like if you're seeing clients, you up everybody by $20. That's not a lot, but yet that adds up. Yeah. You know, in a big way, in a big hurry. So. Well, and I think even just saying yes to this work starts mm -hmm. unfolding that process. It's like, okay, where do I need to bring more in, let some go, do healing, like you said, self-reiki, all of these different things, just saying yes, like, okay, this is my intention. And it's a long process. I think we still are always going through it. There's always work to be done around oh, yeah. it, I think. You know, it's a continual process, I should say. It's, it's that spiral. You come back and visit new things around it. Um, you know, I think it's nice to, it is, it's, there's this initial healing around it. And, and then I think, you know, like you said, sometimes you'll catch yourself in something and, um, yeah, it continually, continually work on it, but just even setting the intention, saying yes to it ar around it all starts that process for mm -hmm. you. Well, Reiki yeah. <laughs> with it. Yeah. Reiki, self Reiki. That's the answer to everything. Yeah. So you are going to start teaching classes about this? I am in the spring. Um, I'm working on the curriculum because I, um, what I taught before needs to be updated. And um, so I'll be, if people want to email me or it's uh, Shelly, which is spelled C-H-E-L-L-I-E at intercompassreiki.com. Okay. And they can put, get put on an, a waiting and list. I, so they can be put on a waiting list. What's, do you have a structure of the class at all? Or is that still? It was, um, what I did before was a six week program where we, um, and, and it'll be online again, 
where we um, just worked our way through like values and just starting with where you are um, with unbear undiscovering, you know, journaling, um, talking about where where did this come, where did some of these ideas come from? Okay. And then uh, what else, what are, what are, you know, tell us about your other offerings because you teach Reiki and I do teach Reiki. Reiki. So first of all, uh, uh, well, we teach in the San Francisco Bay area. We teach in Lincoln city, Oregon. We teach in Seattle. Uh, We teach in Bend, Oregon, and we teach online. So we're all over the place. Um, We have um, a free download. If you sign up for our newsletter, for um, an article I've written about Reiki and relationships because Mike and I do work together. So that's been an interesting thing to work through. Um, I have, we have uh, a kid Reiki class coming up in December. We, and then I've got the normal, all the Reiki classes. We've got um, level one and two. And at the end of October, in California, um, the first weekend in November, we're teaching a master class. Then we're going up to Seattle to teach Karuna. And um, let's see what else, Karuna. And then in Lincoln City. Um, so anyway, um, we've got a lot going on. So if you're all, it's all on our website, intercompassreiki.com. Yeah. And then you have the uh, coffee with the camera Myers. Coffee with the camera Myers is the last Friday of the month. Normally it will be uh, the next to last this month. So you sign up on our website for that directly. So you don't. Okay. Get all, all and the and just a little bit about that. That's like a conversation. It's just a, a talk about Reiki. We just usually have one topic. Somebody has a question and we just kind of, and we let people um, join us that um, or join the conversation, like throw in their ideas and how it works for them. Awesome. And I keep meaning to ask you this. Are you teaching in person in Lincoln City, Oregon? Yeah. At your house? At our house. Oh, because I have people ask and and I've thought so. I've sent them to you, but yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Then. Okay. We're, yeah, we're teaching in person and we're, um, yeah, right here in our house. We have a house on the lake and it's, you know, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. And all those singing bowls behind you. Yeah, I love them. Yeah. And are you teaching crystal classes? I am. I teach uh, Laurel's crystal class. Wait, my computer is doing something weird here. Sorry. It's okay. We can't tell on this end. There. Uh, there. Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Mercury retrograde. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I teach crystal Reiki, Reiki drumming. Um, go chakras. To oh, yeah. Go to the website. There's all <laughs> go kinds to the of website stuff. And look at go it to all. the website. Well, I, I just tell people that. that because a lot of people actually are interested in the Reiki drumming and the, you know, Reiki crystals and Reiki and what that means. And so, yeah, yeah we want to be yeah, sure. The crystal that. Reiki is, is a beautiful, beautiful course. Mm. It's, um, it, it, uh, it's not about the thing that I like for people to understand is it's not about like this, like a rose quartz is for your heart kind of a class it's you can look that stuff up online this is creating grids to create transformation for people around them during Mm -hmm. a session and um and you can do it distantly or in person um when you're working with people well we should do another podcast about that we should yes we should and that'd be fun that's already well shelly thank you so much thank you it's yeah. been awesome. It's funny. We only live a couple of hours away and here we yeah. are getting to talk to each other. Speaking of time. Yeah, I know. Um, so um, anyway, again, she is inner, inner I N N E R 
compass.com. Of course, it'll be in the show notes. Um, and then Robin and I are Colleen and Robin at ReikiLifestyle.com. We also have upcoming classes and you can go to our Reiki, our um, website for that too. I think this will get posted in time for, um, to mention again, our seven day class with William Rand um, that I'm teaching Karuna Reiki with him in Hana, Hawaii. And you can go to Reiki.org for that. So yeah. thank you to all our listeners. Really, what a great conversation and great topic, Shelley. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening.